Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundforks. This is episode 91 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in previous episode we did the Val simulation and preparations for the launch of our interplanetary colonizer uh, ship bound for Duna. And just to remind you guys, this was the ship that I was featuring in 2000k or in 2000 subscriber special um, episode of Kerbal Engineering. So now it's finally time to actually launch that ship and start the orbital assembly because our curb into Duna window is coming within 160 days. So by the time it comes we want to make sure that we are absolutely ready to go. So we have to take into account that we might even have some mislaunch and problems and failures and stuff because after all we are playing with dang it. Never forget that. And it's a highly complex ship as well. So that being said, we have the first section, the drive component on the launch pad and let us launch it. I will shoot for 130 kilometer orbit around Kerbin where I will be assembling this guy. Because it will be a big ship with relatively low thrust to weight so I do intend to have longer burns which means some periapsis will be lowered during those burns from my own experience. Nothing really special with this, it's very similar to the simulation, only this time we're playing for the keeps, guys. So, yeah. Good ascent overall, KW rocketry 5 meters doing their job pretty nicely, I'm overall pretty happy with the way it looks so far. And, uh, yeah. Dumping the fairings. This is a little bit, I think, four or five times times acceleration due to the frame rate. So I wanted you guys to actually not see <laughs> the slideshow. So sorry if it's a little bit faster than expected, but what can you do? Anyway, um, preparing for the orbital circularization burn. Extending the Megalodor solar panels just because we can. coming up on our maneuver node burn and I'm actually burning a little bit also using the RCS for reasons that I completely don't understand but I just thought it would be fun. Okay, doing the orbital insertion burn or orbital circularization burn, sorry guys. Uh, and uh, Coming close and stop. I have to train a little bit to stop earlier because this KW rocketry engines don't react instantly. So let us just repurpose it to ship because I don't want it to be called a station or something or whatever. So okay. I think we're good. We need to do some corrections because our orbit is 125 by 157. I want it 130 by 130 even. So it will be easier to be launched later and easier to dock and rendezvous and all that jazz. So. Okay. Here we go, 4 meters per second to burn. Not a whole lot, because I think the point is to raise the periapsis to 1, 130 roughly. So I'm even, I was even thinking on doing it on monoprop, but yeah. Okay, I'm happy with the periapsis. Now to fix the apoapsis to make it 130 think it should be fine. Let me just check. Not a big burn, 20 meters per second. All good. And then in two days we have our Remjulander changing sphere of influence 
going if you remember from the previous episode it will be doing a slingshot around Val to be able to reach Paul okay 20 meters per second burn done our orbit is 130 by 131 I think that's pretty doable and I'm happy with it overall so let us just make sure I'm just making sure that all of the fuel is transferred everything is fully loaded and decoupling saying bye bye to our ascent stage and the drive section I'm just slowly pulling it away to make sure that we don't hit our so two rovers and the drive section looks kinda cool doesn't it okay moving on we are going with our MT and we had an unplanned Tylo encounter that was I was really afraid of guys because that messed up our encounter with um, Paul significantly so I it's my own mistake I didn't see it the game never told me so but uh, rather than complaining about it I'm gonna do and try to correct to at least come to a good enough orbit and see to salvage what we can salvage from this so I'm just trying now to fiddle with the maneuver node to get as good as I can and it is gonna cost me 651 meters per second so it's gonna cost me quite dearly actually it's 650 meters per second that I didn't account for so I'm a little bit concerned that we might be choosing between Paul flyby and Paul landing but then again why the hell are we going there in the first place so yeah I'm a little bit hesitant we'll we'll see how it goes so um starting the burn now like I said 600 meters per second burn it's not at all a little burn it's quite substantial burn and the one that I maybe should have seen coming and hopefully avoid when going around Tylo but the game never told me that it's gonna happen so yeah way to go okay 250 more to burn One fifty more and uh, and yeah. Okay. So going around Tylo, still making some fixes, see if I can salvage something from this endeavor. And rather than doing that, let us just see how much fixing this is gonna cost me. 72 additional meters per second. Well, given that fact that we have 3.1 and that our burn to Kerbin will be 1.7 I'd say we are on a tight budget but I think we still have some room for fiddling so let us leave Tylo by Tylo hi Tylo by Tylo we never cared about you anyway um, Okay, hurrying up on our burn and it's going to be a short burn so might as well go down to the wire and okay let's execute it bam hit the gas okay and let's see how we did with encounter and we have a pole encounter great okay so I'm just gonna make it a mental note that somewhere along the apoapsis I'll make a maneuver note just to make sure that 
we actually can fiddle a little bit more if we need to do so. Okay, just making sure to get as tight and counter as possible. Right now, while it's still cheap, 28 meters per second, so as you can see, not a big burn, but yeah. And it's gonna happen in 14 days, which means our uh, we can actually start preparing the second part, the interplanetary part, and my crew was apparently auto-selected for me, something which I don't take lightly. No way. We are choosing our own crew, and since this will be a lot of a little bit of engineering task, I was actually think that this part of the mission will be uh, piloted and led by none other than our very own Varuk M. Kerman. So, yes, congratulations, Varuk. I told you I'm gonna make it up for you for not going to the experimental shuttle. So, we do need an engineer, so definitely we will go with Varuk. Mm -hmm. Just checking, and yeah, okay, so nobody else, just Varuk will be piloting this craft. In the total of our craft, we will have five Kerbals going up, but um, rather than all five going on this craft, they will be coming later on SSTOs. So, off we go. Everything looks nominal, Viruk looks pretty happy. Starting... The, yeah. Starting the prograde turn. Or gravity turn. By the way, as you can see, I'm going pretty steep up because this craft has plenty delta V. But the thing is, uh, we want to make sure that this long craft doesn't get stuck somewhere in the process or starts going flippy on us. So, 130 apoeps is already set, and let us just quickly set up the circularization maneuver, which reminds me I never paid attention to the alignment with the other craft, but I guess uh, that's something that I'll just have to live with. Okay. Angling ourselves, and we have node in one and a half minutes. Turning on the lights, because Varuk, you don't want to be in the darkness, right, buddy? Okay. Mm -hmm. And doing the burn. So far, so good. Okay, let's see. Our liquid fuel is out. Let's decouple the boosters. And just slowly move away from here. And... Oh! boink okay it's not a big bump but still we have to be careful oh i really look like i really like the badass look of this ship it's just awesome okay perfect we are in orbit and i'm deliberately haven't burned to 130 by 130 because i want to see first screenshot badass really uh and i want to keep in the lower orbit so that I can actually perform the rendezvous with the drive section. So far our drive section has only 27 meters per second, which is completely negligible, but let's us uh, see when we will do the rendezvous dance. So, a couple of orbits, front and back. Okay, this one seems close enough. Oh, too far. Let's see if we can align these two birds together. A little bit of fiddling, and yes, here we go. We have an encounter in 3 hours and 51 minutes. Sure. Let us do some laps until then. By the way, we do want to slowly position ourselves so that we are pointing prograde at the, when the time comes. 
and of course my nav ball is going wild. Fortunately I don't have to care about it, so rather than doing that let us just quickly time accelerate and do some laps. Yay! So yeah. I, ra I figured rather than give you guys dizziness, I decided to switch focus and focus on Kerbin. And then just do a couple of laps, that way I think it will be much better. So yeah, let's just see how it looks like. 2 minutes 14 seconds to go, 2 hours 14 minutes to go. That would equate to roughly a few orbits, so I decided to stop the recording and just resume the recording when we have a close in encounter, because I thought, I mean, I really didn't want to bore you with all the laps. So, beside Varuk was playing checkers during that time. Anyway, so, okay, getting ready for the burn, 19 point... 18.9 meters per second, and we have 27 meters per second in this uh, <laughs> boosting stage. So, yeah, that should be actually plenty. Okay, coming down to the wire, and let us do the burn. Almost there, a little bit more. Okie dokie. Here we are. Perfect, we have a decent encounter. 15 kilometer separation, I just will have to, I guess, work towards it. Okay, let's see how close can we actually get it. With a little bit of fiddling, I really want it to be even closer. I'm pretty sure I can make it closer, but let's see. Hmm. 75 meters per second, and yeah. Maybe not. Let's just keep uh, keep it here and see how we will actually align these. Okay. Our two ships are closing in on each other. Target speed 89 meters per second. And now it's a little bit of rendezvous dance. 20, 74 meters per second difference to target. And I'm just now pointing my craft retrograde relative to the target. And I'm just trying to see how will I get these two markers to line up. So, burning target prograde. I want to actually accelerate a little bit towards the target. And moving our separation point are actually reducing the separation so let's see mm -hmm. 3.4 2.8 kilometers already feels much better two kilometers even better sounds great so yeah 29 meters per second excellent And we are 10 kilometers out, so I'm guessing we will have a rendezvous pretty soon. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's see, we are approaching 9 kilometers out. I'm just making sure to keep the yellow retrograde marker on the retrograde with a target and I'm thinking I'm messing things up a little bit so rather than stopping relative to the target I'm thinking of accelerating a little bit and I'm using RCS to do so which might not be the most prudent case given the size of this craft you want to keep to sticking to the RCS fuel anyway so just making sure to orient myself 
target prograde and burning target prograde so that we kind of keep in line with really going towards it. So yeah. Seven point four kilometers out. Six point four. Burning to keep those two markers still aligned. I can tell you it's not the most fuel efficient transfer, that's for sure. Okay. 10 meters per second difference. 4.9 kilometers out. We are slowly but surely approaching our mark. Which is good, I'm just hoping not to expend too much of the fuel as I'm doing so, otherwise we will need to refuel at some point, which is a little bit disconcerting to be honest, because I never planned that to happen, but okay. <clears throat> Let's just see where we end up with, shall we? Okay, 14 meters per second, 2.8 kilometers out. I'm expecting that the physics will start kicking in very soon. 2.6, 2, 2.5, 2, 4, 2, 3, and... Bam! There's a physics warp for you. Which means I kicked up the uh, time acceleration a notch. So, 1.9, we have 18 meters per second relative velocity, which I think is pretty healthy given the range. And now we come to the exciting part, docking. The point is to dock this big guy to the other one. So, bringing up the docking align indicator, I just want to make sure... Uh, there, there, there's only one docking port available, senior, so that's pretty much our target. I don't have to worry about selecting the right one. And we have only one docking port, senior, on this craft here anyway. So, I guess that's okay. 200 meters out. And when we come a little bit closer, I'm gonna just decelerate at 1.8 meters per second, so it's time to actually start paying attention. Control from here and start paying attention to our docking procedure. Okay, let's align the two craft together. It's good thing that I actually balance these two uh, with the RCS build aid. I really cannot tell you guys how many times that thing had saved my hide. Okay, going up, going up, aligning, perfect, a little bit down, I'm just trying to figure out which controls is which, okay, almost perfect alignment, and now it's just a matter of using our la lateral thrusters to maintain and do the docking. Okay, thrusting sideways, and um, yeah. Stopping. Six meters. I think we're good, and time to dock this bad boy. Five meters out. Four, three, two, one, and docked. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the first drive section of our Duna Interplanetary craft. Uh, we will be launching the SSTO section in the next episode. Until then, uh, like if you like the episode, hit that subscribe button for more KSP content that should be coming soon. I guess it's thank you very much for watching, guys. Enjoy the screenshot, and this is Gromfork signing off.